All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, today we will talk about the ADAS model. And this is one of your kind of pivotal macroeconomics graph. Uh, the AD represents the aggregate demand, which means the entire base, aggregate, everybody. And AS stands for the aggregate supply, which looks at all of the land capital that's being used in the short run in one economy. And put together, we have the ADAS model. So a few things to note. Number one, we have to know exactly why AD and AS uh, slope either downward or upward on a graph, and how could we recognize ADAS on a graph? So to illustrate that, we need to draw our graph. Here we have on the x-axis the real GDP. And we talked about this before in class where we focused on a base year and we look at uh, the quantity of goods consumed, produced, and so this gives us a better measure of growth uh, from one year to the next. We can also put zero uh, at the origin. On the y-axis, we have price level, which we can call inflation. And we talk about inflation where it is the rise of, it's, a, it's an increase in the price of goods and services and wages at, in one given time. Now, if you want to, you could, you don't have to. You could also put underneath real GDP, unemployment. And we know that real GDP and unemployment are inversely related. So when we see an increase in GDP, unemployment is actually decreasing. And if real GDP decreases, unemployment is increasing. Again, both of these variables are inversely related. So we can just use on the x-axis real GDP. I'm going to use $19.1 trillion. And we have an inflation rate of at about 1.9% which will give us our point A equilibrium, like so. <clears throat> now we can also put underneath world GDP 19.1, the current rate of unemployment around 4.6%, sorry, 3.6%. And here we have the ADAS model. So before we go into the actual graph of AD and AS, I want you to kind of see what we have and based upon point A is located, our equilibrium, what happens if we extend the vertical dotted line further up? And we extend the horizontal line further to the east. Now, it looks as if that we now have not one, but one, two, three, four quadrants within quadrant one. We can now name this one, two, three, and four. So I know that the sports season has been kind of um, off due to the global pandemic. I'm a big fan of the NBA and not having to see any games. It's been pretty tough uh, to not see much happening on TNT or NBA TV. So for the sake of this lecture, I'm going to use the NBA to illustrate how the NBA is somewhat related to the ADAS graph. The NBA, by the way, stands for the National Basketball Association. Let's focus on quadrant one. Quadrant one, we can call this the Boston Celtics. And we know because this Boston Celtics point is in the Northeast region, somewhere around here, Boston, as on the map, the United States. Massachusetts in the northeast region. 
And I want you to focus on point Boston and look at Boston on the x-axis. Based on the x-axis, Boston is actually growing really well. Unemployment is also really low. The only problem that Point Boston has is on the y-axis. Inflation is rising. So when growth is great, inflation is high, unemployment is low, Boston Celtics is experiencing what we call an inflationary gap. They are in what we call this overheating economy. And some examples of inflationary gap could look at different types of markets, such as the housing market, where we may see more folks buying homes. Uh, they could actually increase the price of those homes. It can now lead to a bubble. And we all know that a bubble must eventually burst. Hence, the economy at this point is overheating. Inflationary gap. Quadrant two, we can now look at this, what we call the Northwest region, Northwest region. And if you look at the NBA, there's really no team out in Northwest. The closest team I would say would be the Portland Trailblazers, Portland Trailblazers out in Oregon. I can call this point Portland. Now with Point Portland, we can see that on the x-axis, GDP is really awful. It is less than 19.1 and point A. So if GDP is awful, unemployment must be high. And also what's worse is we do see on the y-axis inflation to be high as well. So at Point Portland, we have low growth low, un I'm sorry, high unemployment, high inflation. This is the worst possible region to be in. We call this stagflation. Stag for stagnant growth, high inflation put together. And this is essentially the worst region to be in because you have again, low growth, high unemployment and high inflation. Quadrant three, now looking at Southwest, we can put here point LA, and I'm gonna use the Los Angeles Clippers to represent that region there. Now at point LA, we can see for growth on the x-axis, it's actually awful as well. It's not growing to where we want it to grow. Unemployment is also high. However, inflation is actually really low, and that's good, because the purchasing power of each consumer is stronger when inflation is low. So at point LA, the only good thing happening is a low inflation on the y-axis. And we can call this a recessionary gap. A recessionary gap. Because when we have slow growth and high unemployment, we have a recession. The last region we see is region four or quadrant four, what we call Southeast region. And here we can put on this side a point, let's say Miami, the Miami heat. And we can put point Miami in the Southeast region and see what's happening with Point Miami. On the x-axis, looks really good. GDP is high, unemployment is low, and on the y-axis, inflation is also low. So at Point Miami, we have all three variables where we want it to be, high growth, low unemployment, and low inflation. So this is actually the ideal region to be in at Point Miami. Uh, and then again, if you think about the actual region itself, it would be kind of nice to be in South Beach today. This is a quick overview of the ADAS graph.